Yeah, so this talk will be about our work at Lightning AI uh, around PyTorch Lightning uh, in the Gen AI space specifically. Uh, I'll be the first one speaking, then I'll pass it on to Carlos and Adrian, who are the masterminds behind uh, PyTorch Lightning and a lot of our open source stuff. Uh, so yeah, let's just start. So PyTorch Lightning, as William said in the keynote, um, is one of the frameworks that was released in uh, uh, 18, 19, uh, but then it's powering a lot of uh, open source repos uh, in the Gen AI space. So we get a lot of monthly downloads, a lot of traction, a lot of companies using it, uh, and we hear from uh, cloud providers and so on. We have a lot of customers using PyTorch Lightning. Can you help them out and so on? So this is uh, really great, and we try to keep it stable and simple and performant as much as possible. Uh, and then, yeah, we just joined the PyTorch Foundation. It's really exciting uh, as a moment for us, for sure. Uh, and some of the models that we're powering, like Stable Diffusion uh, and uh, SDXL, uh, the last uh, generation, is, was built with PyTorch Lightning. Then a lot of people are training uh, also eigenphase models with PyTorch Lightning as a trainer. Uh, and we also power some of the latest architectures that are coming out. So it's, um, we're very happy to see the community. We try to help everyone jump on the latest versions and so on. Uh, also, Nemo Megatron, which is, uh, and Nemo in general, uh, which is a framework that a lot of enterprise uses um, to uh, train very, very large models. Uh, it has PyTorch Lightning underneath, and we're working closely with uh, NVIDIA to make it happen so that uh, they can submit their own uh, MLperf uh, stuff and, and be successful with their customers. So this is more or less our stock, uh, very briefly. In the past, we had a few more projects. We, uh, we focused on a, on a few of them. So one is PyTorch Lightning. So it gives you kind of a fully managed uh, training at scale. We'll see what that means in a second. Uh, we recently launched Lightning Fabric, which is basically whatever is in the PyTorch Lightning trainer, but unbundled in pieces. So you can uh, write your own training loops, but still use some of the things that power PyTorch Lightning, like uh, distributed strategies or precision plugins and so on. Um, and Torch Metrics is one of the de facto standards for metrics in AI. So you see it uh, in a lot of repositories. It uh, supports more than 100 metrics in a variety of domains. And uh, as we all know, uh, computing metrics on whatever model you have is very important. And it's very important that it's done right. And it's done uh, right also in distributed settings. And things are reduced uh, properly and fully validated. So this is uh, something that is very organically grown. Um, Lit Lama and LitGPT are, well, when Lama was first released, uh, one of the things that we did is to re-implement it based on NanoGPT. And so it, this is how Lit Lama uh, grew. Um, and then uh, LitGPT followed by supporting more than just Lama. Uh, so there's support for uh, Falcon, Mistral, and so on. The key here is that they're very one single file, super optimized, uh, sorry, super hackable. Uh, repositories that ended up being also optimized. Uh, so we learned, for example, that Meta uh, took the Llama code and LGPT code and make it uh, like uh, uh, launch a new uh, uh, in, um, uh, inference optimized uh, repository based on that. Tiny Llama is an open source uh, um, initiative that is based on on LGPT and so on. Uh, so if you make it hackable in the end, it will become fast, and this is what. Uh, uh, what happened in, in our case. And so we're supporting all cases but between pre-training, fine-tuning, and, uh, and inference. Uh, so this, for the ones of you who don't know, this is PyTorch, how PyTorch Lightning looks like. And not everybody likes the structure, uh, but many teams like the structure because if you have a team of engineers or machine learning engineers or practitioners, and they have to read each other's code, having the code be organized this way standardizes the code across teams. But collaboration is just one way, uh, uh, just one reason why PyTorch Lightning is, uh, is adopted. Uh, breaking up the code this way also allows the trainer to understand when to run what. And so uh, there's a lot of engineering that you can delegate to the trainer, uh, unless you have specific needs, of course. And if you have, um, uh, you can customize it with strategies, you do speed, FSTP, and so on. Uh, but if, if you have, um, and this is what we did, like essentially in, uh, in February, we released uh, 2.0. We simplified the internals a lot. PyTorch Lightning had become a, a bit hard to read internally and debug. So we did a lot of cleanup. 
We stabilized the API. We heard from the community that uh, things were changing a bit too fast. Uh, so we kind of wanted to say, okay, this is going to be the API moving forward. And in fact, from 2.0 to 2.1, there's no uh, more changes. Uh, many integrations were taken off from core and they're now managed externally. For example, Habana Gaudi integrations. The Habana team is doing a great job at maintaining their own integration there with strategies and accelerators. And we reduced the number of dependencies. We further reduced them in 2.1, which has just been released. Uh, and 2.1 has been all about managing large models. So how do you uh, load them up without going out of memory and so on? And we'll talk about, more about that. And in 2.0, we uh, also introduced one more thing, which is sometimes, you know, between raw PyTorch and fully managed Lightning, you want you just want more control, but you still want to take advantage of the things that uh, PyTorch Lightning brings to you. And so if you're a control enthusiast, then we introduce kind of the, uh, the spectrum there represented by Fabric, uh, which is, again, uh, as I mentioned before, the unbundling of what uh, is in the PyTorch Lightning trainer. And this is how it looks like. Essentially, you set up your models, optimizers, and so on. You still write your training loop uh, manually, but then uh, through the Fabric object, you can assign strategies. So you, you can use FSDP without changing your code, the rest of your code, and the rest of your training loop. All right, and with this, I would like to leave it to Carlos, which, uh, who will talk about lit and how it came to be. Hi, so my name is Carlos Mozzoli, and today I would like to talk about the lead family of uh, model implementations, particularly our large language models. So first, I would like to first mention NanoGPT. Most of you are probably familiar, familiar with it. NanoGPT is an amazing repository. It enabled uh, everybody familiar with just uh, basic PyTorch to understand how language models are implemented and trained. However, na NanoGPT is limited in its scope. Uh, it's mainly an educational resource, but what if, we, what if it could be extended to support the most powerful open source models? So this is why we decided to create LitLama. LitLama is a significant improvement over NanoGPT, supporting uh, pre-training, fine-tuning, and text generation for the original Llama 1 uh, implementation by Meta. However, it uh, turns out that Llama 1 was just the beginning of the explosion in, in LLMs. So for that, we needed to create something else and extend it. And this is why we created LitGPT. Uh, LitGPT is an evolution of LitLama that, that also supports Falcon, uh, Llama 2, Mistral, the Pythia models, stable LLM, etc. And, um, and it it, it aims to unify all of this under a single model implementation that is hackable and extensible. And this, this project is not just about open source and education for everybody else. Uh, they are also the testing grounds of uh, Lining Fabric and PyTorch Lining because uh, these repositories allowed us to laser focus our, our uh, newest um, releases into training larger models and generative, generative AI. So to prove this, um, here uh, I have benchmarks uh, that show the, perf the performance improvements of using LitGPT and Torch Compile. So uh, we recently uh, collaborated with the Torch Compile team over at Meta to, to benchmark, benchmark the, the generation and training scripts. You can uh, you can compile, easily compile the LitGPT model without any difficult changes to achieve a 20% speed up uh, for tra uh, training. In this case, I'm showing it for a, uh, for a 3 billion uh, Llama 1 model and get a two times uh, speed up in text generation uh, for Llama 7 billion. Uh, this means that you don't need to commit to a specific platform that offers you uh, like a service like this, like fine tuning or pre-training service or like uh, inference so that you control the entire stack from the, from the model implementation to how it is executed. Now, the, yeah, uh, we, we also use LitGPT to test the scaling on TPUs. So uh, I've been collaborating a lot with the Google Cloud TPU team uh, to fine tune Falcon 7 billion and Falcon 40 billion on their most capable chips, which, uh, which are the TPU V4 and TPU V5E. 
uh, we were able to, to achieve a much improved performance per dollar. And this, uh, all of these improvements were directly upstream into our open source uh, software, such as uh, Fabric and uh, the trainer, so that you can also benefit uh, of these features if you try them out yourself. Now, the, the lead GPT models are not just for us to run benchmarks and make small improvements. They are also for you, for the researchers and for the practitioners. For instance, a research group in Singapore uh, forked lead GPT to train a tiny llama. Tiny Llama is a, basically a copy of, of LeadGPT that, uh, that uses um, handwritten kernels for some of its operators uh, with the objective of having an improved speed up. They are currently training a 1 billion version of the model and they expect uh, to train it up to 3 trillion tokens. Uh, now, here I'm showing the, the, the relative speed up in terms of samples per second during training for a 3 billion version, version of Tiny Lama, not the 1 billion version, to have a, a stronger numbers. And you can see that even though Tiny Lama achieves a 10% uh, speed up over just regular eager, just torch compiling your model, model is, is still better than that. So th this really shows the advantage of, having, of controlling a simple model implementation that you can easily compile and, and make faster with basically just one line of code. And finally, one thing I, uh, that is also important to mention is that uh, a repository like LeadGPT also drives in innovation. So at the New Rips to, uh, 2023 conference, there is a LLM efficiency challenge where the objective is to, to uh, fine-tune a pre-trained model on a, uh, on a single day using a single GPU. Now, uh, lead, LeadGPT is part of the official res recipe that the challenge organizers offers uh, to get started. And to help out the community, we, we implemented a leaderboard that you can uh, submit to so, uh, to test your model uh, through Discord. Uh, so far, there, has, there have been hundreds of, of uh, successful su submissions with up to 35% uh, of them using LeadGPT. So we know that people use it to to do their research and, and drive uh, innovation. And this combination of fast and simple models that are easy to understand and extend, and the community around them has allowed us to, to make our open source tools um, more flexible and powerful. Now, I would like to invite to the stage to my colleague Adrian to talk about the newest features in the 2.1 release that have enabled us to do all of this. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Adrian Valkli. Uh, I'm a research engineer at Lightning AI. And I quickly want to go over some of the uh, more exciting features in the latest 2.1 release that we uh, dropped a few days ago. Um, first of all, um, about a year ago, we changed the uh, package name. So now it's pip install Lightning. Uh, this contains the Lightning trainer um, and also Lightning fabric that we heard about. Uh, but uh, the two things are also available as standalone uh, packages. So PyTorch Lightning, pip install PyTorch Lightning uh, still exists. And there's also now uh, pip install Lightning Fabric. And if you want to upgrade and profit from the new features, uh, there are no breaking changes, so you don't need to change the code. Um, so um, uh, there are a lot of learnings we've gone through uh, by uh, when building LitGPT and uh, these uh, have been upstreamed to our light, uh, Lightning trainer and fabric. And so one essential challenge is initializing a large model, whether you are training, fine tuning, or doing inference, you need to somehow get the memory, the model and the weights into memory. And uh, so with FSTP, if the model does not fit in a single GPU, with FSTP, you can shard the model, but uh, the, the challenge of getting the weights into the CPU memory and then onto the GPU still exists. So in uh, the Lightning module, we have this hook called configure model. If you move your model definition into that hook, then the, uh, when we initialize the model, it first goes to the meta device. And then when training be begins at the setup phase, uh, we uh, FSTP will wrap each 
module, each submodule, and move it individually and shard it individually onto the GPUs. This is very efficient uh, because you basically bypass uh, moving everything to CPU first uh, and then to the GPU, uh, especially uh, uh, when the model is larger than a single node. And the same thing uh, exists in Fabric as well, except there's a, there it's a context manager. With fabric.init module and empty init true, which is the default actually for FSTP, uh, again, the model gets uh, first moved to the meta device, which does not consume any memory. And then uh, when we do, do fabric.setup.model, uh, the model gets sharded and wrapped by FSTP and initialized directly on the device. And so here I did a very quick uh, toy example with Falcon 40 billion um, uh, over six A100 uh, 40 gigabyte GPUs. If I instantiate the model, um, um, uh, without using the context manager, without using this tool. Uh, it takes 377 seconds um, and uh, uses almost a terabyte of uh, CPU memory. Um, so if I, if I wouldn't have a terabyte of CPU memory, I would run out of memory. With fabric init module or, uh, again, in the trainer configure module, um, the, the time is almost instant, so my uh, model gets... Uh, um, instantiated in two seconds, and then when we do um, fabric setup module, um, the CPU memory peaks at only 12 gigabytes. And so it's uh, 100 times faster and 100 times uh, less uh, memory requirement. Now, we, when we get to the training, um, we typically save checkpoints, and with regular models, CNNs and so on, this is pretty fast, but transformer models are really uh, large and they are sharded across multiple GPUs. So how do we save a checkpoint? Um, if we gather the checkpoint into a single uh, machine and then save it, we could actually run out of memory. So the idea here is that uh, we can save a distributed checkpoint and save each shard individually to uh, check a checkpoint file. And so uh, in Fabric uh, or in Trainer, you can configure this in the FSTP strategy by uh, defining state dict state dic type equals sharded or full. Um, and if you choose sharded, uh, then every time the trainer, trainer saves a checkpoint or every time when, we, when you save a checkpoint in Fabric, it will produce a folder of individual checkpoint files. Um, uh, very efficiently and without uh, uh, peaking CPU uh, memory and potentially getting out of memory. And uh, as I said, the same thing is also available in Fabric. It's the same uh, argument, so static type equals sharded. And uh, this is uh, possible because of the awesome improvements in uh, because of the awesome distributed checkpointing AI in PyTorch 2 and PyTorch 2.1. Uh, now, another challenge is uh, uh, training uh, or fine-tuning uh, models on consumer hardware uh, where we don't have a lot of memory available. And so, uh, for a very long time, the, or since the beginning, the Lightning Trainer uh, supported mixed precision training. But it turns out that for fine-tuning or inference, it's uh, actually uh, possible to have everything in uh, 16-bit or lower precision. So that's all the weights, uh, the optimizer states, and activations. So um, in Lightning 2.1, it's very easy to configure that. So the precision argument, you can, for the precision argument, you can now specify 16 or uh, BF16 true, which means you don't use you keep the model weights in 16-bit precision. You can also go a step further and leverage um, integrations like bits and bytes that provide a, a variety of quantization algorithms uh, uh, or double quantization algorithms for these 4-bit uh, and 8-bit precision types. So we made this plugin that you can easily um, configure with the algorithm and then pass into the trainer. And uh, 
with uh, 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 with fine tuning Llama uh, seven billion here um, with uh, LoRa together with the bits and bytes, we see that um, uh, we we drop the memory requirement from twenty one gigabytes to fourteen gigabytes. However, there is a trade off, so it, it is slower. But it means that you have more flexibility because now you can uh, train uh, these models on your consumer uh, GPU hardware. And uh, there's uh, a lot more. So um, we have now also a FSDP available if you run on the TPU pods. A PJRT uh, as well, um, the new uh, runtime uh, from XLA. Uh, there's a transformer engine plugin as well, which uh, gives you uh, speed ups on the hopper architecture. And uh, we've made uh, also loading checkpoints faster through lazy loading. And uh, in Fabric, we added a lot more features around uh, granular control over checkpoint loading and saving. And that's the overview for the 2.1 release. Uh, uh, we would love if you check it out. And if you have any questions, we are happy to answer them. Thank you. Do you have any plan to support the uh, AMD GPU? Yeah, we don't have uh, specific uh, plugins or strategies for AMD GPUs, but uh, you know whatever um, uh, PyTorch supports because it's not a different backend, right? So I don't think there's anything different that we need to do on our end. It's more on PyTorch's end to to support that. So yeah, it will run on on AMD hardware. Yeah, if, if you have like PyTorch with uh, Rogue M uh, support installed, yeah. then all the CUDA specific calls in PyTorch will be translated to the corresponding operations for the AMD backend. Okay. Yeah, we can we can talk. Yeah, this is excellent to talk offline <laughs> about. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a great idea to add more testing on these platforms. Exactly. So yeah, we can definitely yeah do that. Uh, we have, um, for example, our lit repository has uh, example uh, inference scripts for all these LLMs. Um, and uh, for example, this also leverages the bits and bytes quantization. Um, um, yeah, does, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah we, we saw a lot of improvements thanks to Horace's uh, also help um, on LeGPT. Now we can reach almost 100 tokens per second on a 7 million model, just, just like that, like what uh, Carlos showed before. So it's a very optimized model right now that you, you can run any Mistral, Falcon, Llama uh, model with. So basically, all you need to do is build a, uh, uh, an inference server or a batch, like batching inference server on top of it. But you can do it in Python. And we'll actually probably publish something about that too. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any more uh, questions? Yes. Yeah. Question there. Yeah, Torch Matrix, I think it's going to be, I mean, you, you, it's a dependency of Lightning. So when you install Lightning, you get Torch Matrix and you can just import it. Um, the reason why we, uni like we create a unified package is because the trainer itself uses a lot of Fabric internally. And, you know, and so, yeah, they're, uh, releasing them together makes a lot of sense always. Torch Matrix is not that way. So we we'll probably just keep it separate. Yeah. So there's no way of releasing them in sync, right? If it makes sense. 
while Fabric and, and Trainer live in the same monorepo, essentially. Yeah. Good. So yeah, hopefully you know we have a Discord. Uh, you can join Lightning AI uh, Discord, and you know let us know integrations. We're always open to integrations. Uh, so yeah. See you in the community. Thank you. Thank you, guys.